a lot of people, and because Reg A plus is essentially a regulation, most people, mainly lawyers, consider it only as such. I believe it should be considered also and first as what the legislator has provided the markets with a financing tool. In our group, we have been uh, organizing several Reg D offering, 506, big, large offerings, small offerings of all kinds. And we have been operating in more than 240 private equity deals and in 169 IPO deals. And what we have remarked, what our problem was always, was what is the exit? How do you raise the money? And how you make to actually make things happen? On paper, everything is perfect. And on paper, we write uh, $100 million raise, $50 million raise, $30 million raise. And there is this wrong held, wide held belief that if the deal is smaller, the fundraising will happen in a safer manner. And actually, that's very wrong. And I'm going to detail uh, in this presentation why. One of the reasons why uh, this is wrong is because in the private equity, there is no sure exit. And if you're an investor, you don't want to just bury your cash in a company. You don't, don't want to just think, well, I'm going to, uh, to put up $1 million, half a million dollars, $100,000 subscription in something that will never come back. There is something that companies too much forget. And this is that when you're the issuer, you must talk to the investor about the return of their capital. It's not only you know, a, a shopping list that you're showing. It's more something that is a cycle. You're saying, here, I take money from you, and here is how I'm going to make it back to you. And this has been uh, too long forgotten because companies, and especially startups, were thinking, well, in the internet days and in these uh, ICO day, days of, of nowadays, well, it's very easy. I'm just going to take the company public. And because it is public, there will be an automatic uh, added value. If we look at the, 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 the situation today, the first exit that has been provided before the Reg A Plus was really you know, the crowdfunding. Um, and it's, it's very funny because if you look over the years, you know, um, over the last 30 years that I'm in this business, initially were well, the scores. The score were limited to $1 million. And then there were the SB1 for $5 million and then for $10 million. And then the SB, SB2, which were limited to uh, $20 million. But in reality, all these offerings were lacking something. It's a critical mass. What do I mean by critical mass? It's the fact that a lot of these offerings were not capable of attracting enough investors to then have a life. I was hearing uh, earlier some very prominent people talking uh, and, uh, about the, the reggae market. And they were making analysis. They were saying some things like, oh, there were 290 companies listed and an average of 8.8 .8 million raised and blah, blah, and blah, blah. I mean, let's be serious. Who can make average on a market that is just newly born? And can you compare a company that goes out with a $3 million offering with a company that goes out with a $50 million offering? Even the legislator, who are not really sensi sensitive people, have made a difference. They have called it tier one and tier two. They have not treated these people the same, and they are not likely to treat them the same because it's something completely different. So how can you make averages on such different things? You need now to realize that we are in a very difficult era. 
This era is the era of doubt. Everybody who is issuing an, uh, uh, a prospectus out to the market is suspected. You know, nobody believes any, anything anymore because the market was too much uh, squeezed by, let's, say, let's take only the 20 last years, by uh, internet companies, by uh, other companies you know, in, the, in the biotech sector, and then there were the first ICOs with the stolen coin and token. So it's obvious that today what the market needs is two things, safety and exit. And that's exactly what the Reggae Plus is providing. But there is one thing that the legislator has still not understood, and that most of the financial community has not understood, is that if you take a company public, and if it, stay, if it takes about $1 million a year to remain public, unless you're in an arena that costs nothing, you will have tough time in doing anything at less than 35 million. So what should be really the, the, the focus interest of all this group of people here is not the average market of companies who raise between five to 50 million, but just this tranche of 35 to 50 million. And when you look at this tranche, which is the only tranche that is capable of surviving after the, the uh, Reggae Plus offering, then you see much better results. And then you don't discourage people with stupid numbers that means nothing. You know, if I give each one of you one cent today, it's 100% more than last year, right? And you can make up figures like that uh, even the inventor of, of the statistics said there are three types of lies. There are white lies, bad lies, and statistics. And so, and, and so what should be done now? It should, there should be an effort made to basically have this uh, new regulation uh, helped now that it's born. And for one time, I must say that because of this uh, um, new regulation that allows the quiet period to die, which, is so, which was one of the last dinosaurs still alive. It's a good thing that now we, we, have, we have finally have a possibility to advertise and to promote the deals and maybe to create a new market. After all, that's what advertising and marketing people are made for. The SCC, you know, did a lot of things, and I just want to go quickly over tier one because in reality for me, it was just a matter to respect whichever company operates in that arena. But I don't believe these companies have a fair chance to survive after the, uh, the, the, their offering. The first great thing is anyone can participate, you know, and you can publicly advertise. There are reviews of financials, but you must pass a coordinated state review. And I think that uh, last point uh, should be soon lifted. I'm talking to a lot of people at the SEC, and uh, a lot of people say that they want to absolutely preempt the state review, even in the tier one. And I think it's, it's the minimum because if you raise money uh, difficultly and if you don't raise enough money, if you still must go through a review, it's, it's then uh, a subject matter that, that becomes very difficult. Then we talk about the part that really is interesting for us today. It is tier two uh, fundraising. So, in this tier two fundraising, some could say, well, it's too bad because it's still a little bit too low. You know, 50 million doesn't do it all. Most interesting deals, most deals in technology or in, in uh, medical field, healthcare field, that want to have a chance to, to make it big, 
must be in the arena of 60 to 85 million. So there is a concern about that. But as everyone can invest and as we can test the waters, which means solicit almost any investor, that's a very good thing. So I put a little bit of advertising in case there would be issuers in the room, like why Reggae Plus is, is a good thing for your company. But the real question that you should ask yourselves is, is that $50 million barrier over one year really absolute? I mean, can I legally go around that? And that's one of the things that I decided to test, you know, was is that uh, $50 million barrier really absolute under regulation A+. Plus? Well, the first way to break it is through a private investment in public equity. A lot of people said to me, well, if you do that, you know, the SEC will just consider it as one fundraising, and it's, going, it's all going to be wrapped into one. So guess what? Last week, I was in my room at the Harvard Club, and I called SEC, uh, and I asked their legal department, what would you do if that was happening? And especially, what would you do if that was happening abroad? And they said, no problem. It's not a limitation. So good news. Actually, once, when you have raised $50 million through a reggae plus, you can still use a pipe to complement it. And that for many cases that we have, such as one company uh, called Sun Center Studio, of which I'm going to talk to you later on, uh, it's, it's good news because it's, put, it's putting people in a position not only to have uh, a capital that has been arbitrarily decided by the legislator and to which the entrepreneur should accommodate, but it actually enables everybody to get the actual capital they need. The second way to resolve this is to list internationally. Do you know that uh, if you list internationally as, as a company, you have a lot of advantages, and you can do that with a Reggae Plus. If you list internationally, you have the possibility to have first much higher valuation. If you look at this table of uh, uh, price per ring ratio of multiple, you basically you know, see that the NASDAQ is only in the, in the seventh position. And that places like Hong Kong you know, clearly uh, make valuation much higher. I have had the experience with that. When I was starting my firm, we were short of finding clients. So we were doing something to get the first client. We would go to a listed company and we would say to them, do you want your value, corporate valuation to double or triple next year? And you will only pay us if it works. And so people would always say, yes, of course. And what we would do is we would simply make a listing in another country. And this was giving us our first bucks. That's a tra trade secret, so don't copy it, please. You can list internationally with Reggae Plus. You can list basically uh, internationally, and even more if you're listed on the NICE or the NASDAQ. Because most foreign uh, exchanges and most foreign securities market do not look at what is happening to your company. They just look at one single thing. Is this company listed on a national market in America? If that's the case, or even if it's over the counter on the NASDAQ, you can list it on different exchanges. And you should use it, because you could have, like for, for what we are planning now for Sun Center Studio, a case in which you have 50 million raised through the Reggae Plus and 100 million raised abroad or through a private investment in public equity. And guess what? 
a lot of people are talking about is there a market after the offering? Well, let me tell you something. There were two companies extremely successful in the history of corporate America. One was IBM, the other one was Microsoft. Do you know why these two companies were so successful? And sorry to, to, to come after such reputation, but it's very interesting to observe the reason why. Actually, if you were a stockbroker, especially in the 60s and 70s, you knew that every quarter IBM was selling a few new shares. So now, if you have the possibility to make a commission, will you criticize that company? Probably not. And that's the same system that Paul Allen suggested to Bill Gates to do. What they were doing is every three months, they were issuing some small amount of shares, you know, new shares of Microsoft. So financial community cannot criticize you when you are a regular supplier of new commissions and new margin. Well, guess what? You can do it as well with Reggae Plus. You can basically have your Reggae Plus on a $15 million basis and then have your multiple listing abroad go through either a pipe or any other form of foreign issue, and this is not considered to be part of the $50 million reggae plus limit because it was not raised in the United States. There is even a specific rule called reg S, which honestly fell a bit into uh, uh, disarray because it had no more uh, use. But remember that till the new law came out, reggae had also fallen in, in sort of uh, uh, forgotten matters, right? And right now, reggae plus is, is you know, making this, uh, this reggae rule a center uh, rule for new companies. And it's exactly what will happen to the reggae because it will have immediately an impact. Moreover, a lot of people talk about this limitation, but you know that a Reg A plus can be followed by a, a Reg S3, which is a secondary offering. Now, secondary offering is no longer S2 because S2 uh, has been abrogated. Now, can, could we use also this Reg A plus, as I said initially, as a financial tool, really. And for that, let me remind you the principle of the leverage. A lot of people say to me, well, wait a minute. Leverage is debt only, right? If I cannot borrow money at a very deep discounted rate, where is my leverage? Well, think about it. A lot of companies could actually raise money from the market. What they cannot afford is to pay the expenses to go to the market. If you now think about the reggae offering, all included, I'm not talking about the, the, the funny prices that you read from the internet, where somebody tells you you can make a reggae plus tier two for $250,000. That's a joke, because you can make the document, you can make the disclosure, and you can make the lawyer rich. And forgive me, I'm one of them. But, but the point is, you cannot actually cover all the costs. Co the cost of a Reggae Plus Tier 2 is at least a million dollars. And for some of the companies, it's going to be closer to two or three million dollars. So how can you make a leverage? Well, very simply, if you're an investor, Instead of investing in the company that will be well or not well managed, why wouldn't you invest in actually the mezzanine, but not a debt mezzanine, an equity mezzanine? Why wouldn't you invest in covering the cost of the company actually going public? Because that is something entirely new, and that tool of the Reggae Plus allows it. And it's a huge return on, uh, uh, on investment. Anybody interested 
in looking at a few Excel sheets which would be bothering for an audience here can contact me uh, at the end of this uh, speech and, and I'll gladly show them how profitable that is. I really think that if we look at it much closer, we could have an equity mezzanine, first because it's less costly than a direct investment. Second, because it allows you to say to your investor, hey, you're not here like in private equity for seven years with me. You're here for six months maximum. And if everything fails, and if, he, if everything goes, blows out, well, we'll still have a public company and we can sell it as a shell. So you won't lose everything. Third, and last point, okay, it's far less risky because it's far less time you're sticking to. I believe that this new system it, that I nickname equity mezzanine and probably my lack of English is, uh, is, is, uh, is a weakness in that, in that regard. But this equity mezzanine has got two big advantages. It's risk-free leverage for the issuer, so you're not bound by a debt that can take away your company. And it's lighter risk leverage for the investor because no matter what happens, at the end of the day, you'll end up with a public company that you can still sell, merge, or do business with. In our group, uh, the dealmakers group, which in involves our law firm, Deschno Hornblower, and also Hornblower & Co., and also you know, several of, of these people, we have six equity mezzanine deals through Reggae Plus Tier 2 offerings that we are now putting on the market. And we are basically going to uh, announce it uh, as one of the events this, in this conference. One of these deals uh, is Sun Center Studio, out of which one of the representatives, Mr. Adam Rotwitz, uh, who is kindly holding a camera to, to film me, is basically uh, here and that you could discuss about. This company for me has been a company I'm very attached to because it's a company that has everything to become the Hollywood studio of the East Coast. And they, they found a very wonderful name called Phillywood, and I think you'll still hear a lot about that name. This company could be an example in the fact of, in the matter of the, of the case that they already raised $90 million privately. And they basically have huge studio and they have already made an incredible number of, of deals with major uh, movies, uh, After Earth, Paranoia, and, they have had, uh, and Creed. And they have done a number of, of deals already also in the advertising uh, uh, arena. But yet, they plan now to make an attraction park. And a huge attraction park, it's another 150 million. So again, the story comes back. And people will say to me, well, but why don't you do a straight S1 IPO? Well, look at the cost. Look at the cost structure. You want to protect the company. You don't want to break the company. So even for a good company that has a steady income, that is profitable because they are making profit every year, it's something that is very important to consider is the cost of the transaction. I would like to play a little video uh, about Sun Center Studio to show you a good, how good a company that is, and not only to promote the company, but also to show you what is the interest of the kind of deals that I'm doing. And if I'm not cut out by the, the people of the staff, I'll come back afterwards just to make a final comment. Okay, I don't want to play it all 
but as you see, it's pretty impressive a company. And what I want to, to, to emphasize is that you cannot just uh, uh, diminish the, the capital requirement of such a company with a, a limitation which is just arbitrary from the legislator. You need to have some flexibility and I think that I'm going to um, write to the SEC to ask for a reconsideration when a company has already assets, like here in this particular case, there's about $100 million of hard assets in the company. We would like this company to be able to raise as much at least as it has assets. That would be rather logical. You know, this 50 million was set up for a, a company that would have potentially zero in asset. And I think that this limitation should be adapted to something more logical for companies who can get more. All this was done at Sun Center Studio. Um, I would like finally to conclude on the Regulation A timeline. The timeline for a Regulation A is basically the following the one that you have now on the screen, about on the 20 weeks. That's considered for a regulation A timeline of the tier two. And I think that is a clear demonstration that everything that is made uh, in this rule is made to be the most essential rule for startups and company launching in the upcoming years. I think the financial community has not realized yet how precious is that rule if it gets a few adaptation and especially uh, an understanding that this $50 million limit should be something adapted to the very situation, uh, to the particular case of the company. I think uh, this regulation has a great future. Finally, if you're uh, doing a regulation A, in the United States, and you're basically uh, looking at uh, finding uh, a foreign uh, syndication or fundraising, you should contact me. Thank you for your attention.